Ready? Three, two, one. This is the Fox Sports Sunday 2016 NFL Mock Draft. Welcome to the NFL, baby. Let's go to work. On Fox Sports Radio. He's Mike Carmen. I'm Dan Byer. Happy to have you with us as we are four picks into our Fox Sports Sunday Mock Draft. So quickly recap, and you can get the picks. We're putting them up on Twitter. I'm at Dan Byer on Fox Mike, you are at? Over at Swollen Dome. Four picks in. Sam Bradford goes first to the Rams. The Browns make a trade with the Eagles to move up to number two to take Johnny Manziel. The Chargers grabbed Ryan Leaf at three, and the Cowboys selected Rocket Ismail at number four when they never even selected him in the first place because he went to the Canadian Football League. Again, this is a Fox Sports Sunday mock draft, and when we mean mock, we mean we are going to make fun of all the bad picks these teams have made throughout the years in the NFL draft, okay? Don't take it too seriously. Everybody's team has always has at least made a bad pick once in their organization. No, right? there's no question. It's just a matter of how mockable they are. Because a couple of the organizations we we debated, and as you you start looking at the bit the grid, and we're trying to analyze, you're saying, well, that's not horrible. That's not terrible. Some are jury still out, but certainly set their teams back if only for a year and set a lot of other questions into motion. The Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock. The Jaguars with the fifth overall pick in the Fox Sports Sunday draft, and I believe the commissioner uh, has the selection. Jaguars select Blaine Gabbert. Boo! 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 All right. We, uh, the vociferous. Overrated. Overrated. The, the, the fans chant. Oh, yes, and there they all come. Here come the boos. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe of all the audio that we found, that could be my absolute favorite, taken from a flip phone <laughs> or an iPhone in the crowd when Blaine Gabbert was drafted by the J- uh, Jacksonville Jaguars as he was 10th overall in the 2011 draft. Now, Blaine Gabbert was kind of the saving grace for the 49ers this past season, but in his time in Jacksonville, um, not good. Specifically, in his third year in 2013, played in just three games and was able to throw seven interceptions. Okay, that this was... The guy, that 2011 draft was interesting because there were a a lot of names uh, out there, quarterbacks that were available. Gabbert goes 10th to the Jaguars through 12 touchdowns his rookie season. Then in 2012, nine touchdowns and six picks, and then the seven picks and the one touchdown in his third season, effectively ending his time with the Jaguars. Rough time, team that was in constant rebuild, directionless in terms of its ownership and and where they were going in the front office and, and certainly devoid of talent anywhere around. I mean, you had the the end of that Jimmy Smith era and McCardell. Those guys were gone. Yes. So now you're you're trying to bring in new talent, and now replete with wide receivers, They're- tight end, and Julius Thomas, Allen and Allen, our Actionville Jaguars. This is one that's not in the too distant past, but it it set up the Blake Bortles era, which, you know, I have half a tattoo on my right calf. Now, we could have gone Derek Harvey in 2008 with the Jaguars, where he played just three seasons with Jacksonville, like Gabbert, had just eight sacks. Justin Blackman, for all the issues that he has had as a high first-round pick in the couple of games that he played, he was actually really good, but uh, has a lot of other issues. So, playing Gabbert off the board at five. Now six, the Baltimore Ravens are on the clock. But let's go down to our draft floor I'm, and I'm Isaac just, Lowenkron just and to see what is going on with the latest. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. I mean, oh, oh okay. okay. I, I Isaac mean, Lowenkron. I know it's the most typical thing Isaac Lowenkron joining seriously? us. Seriously? They're seriously doing that. Oh, okay. I, I, I got to go. I got to go. Oh, I'm on the geez. Air. I'm on interesting. The he's uh, he's Guys. working his phone. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah working guys. his phone. Yeah. Work the phone. What's up with the Ravens pick? Yeah, sorry. I was just on, on, on the phone with a source, and I can report to you now at a Fox Sports Radio exclusive that the Cleveland Browns have just traded up with the Baltimore Ravens to obtain the number six overall pick in the draft. Cleveland has traded up to number six, a source within the organization telling me their main rationale for making this move was, quote, because D. Podesta's computer told us to do it, unquote. Uh, well, uh, you know what? That's not a bad way to be. Uh, oh, uh, guys, wait, no, hang the, on for a second. Uh, yeah, go ahead. We, we can yeah. leave Isaac because the pick is Schefter. in. Let's, hey, Schefter, how about them, Apple Schefter? Let's go. Let's go to the commission who's got the pick. The Browns have traded up to get the Ravens pick at six. With the six pick, the Cleveland Browns select Barkevius Mingo. Oh, Defensive wow. end, LSU. 
The now, there's an all-name selection, Dan Byer. The sixth overall pick of the 2013 draft, and the Cleveland Browns now have two of the top six picks in our Fox Sports Sunday mock draft. Uh, Barkevious, Barkevious Mingo, adding weight this offseason, probably needs to add a little bit more, just two sacks in his second year with the Cleveland Browns. Zero in 2015, his third year. At 24 tackles last year, Barkevious Mingo has not been the first-round product that the Browns had hoped. No, they really were looking for the fortification of the line between him and Phil Taylor. Thought that was going to be the the duo that led them into the new era. And defensively that they'd be able to push while they found their offensive identity post Derek Anderson from low those many years ago. Instead, all you got is a guy with a great name and a pretty lackluster signature for all of the what you could do with a name like Barkevius. The Browns, again, taking Johnny Manziel at two overall, trading up with the Eagles, and then now swinging a deal to move up to six with the Ravens to take Barkevius Mingo. The seventh pick belongs to the San Francisco 49ers, okay? A team with a long history of success. Joe Montana, Steve Young, Jerry Rice. Where, though, have the Niners gone wrong in their selection process? Let's find out. The commissioner has the pick. The San Francisco 49ers select Alex Smith, quarterback, Utah. Oh, 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 boy. Was there really a surprise here? I don't think it's necessarily Alex Smith that is the issue, Mike Harmon. It's that he was picked ahead of Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't help his cause. No, and you're the number one overall pick. Okay, so even though he was pushed aside by Colin Kaepernick and Kaepernick ends up taking the 49ers to Super Bowl 47. Alex Smith, when you have that number one overall pick mentality, or that, that, that stigma with you, you need to produce. And, and he was, just didn't as the number one overall pick should. Sorry, Dan. What always was interesting to me is there was a veritable carousel of coordinators, coaches, etc. He never got crushed the way that, say, Bears quarterback Jay Cutler has been crushed or Tony Romo has been crushed. There was always the what's wrong with Alex yeah. Smith, but he never got the vitriol. I don't. Were there just not expectations? Was he too nice? There was no edge to him, so people didn't go after him. I'm not quite sure. But you look at his history in San Francisco. Not not only for the fact that it didn't deliver in terms of giant wins and the restoration of the 49ers brand, even though he was off to a nice start before getting injured and and Kaepernick coming in. They finally yeah. had some stability there. They, just the the fact of the matter is, you, you had over that course of the years it's it's marked by so many different faces coming into the organization it wasn't until really his fifth season which is amazing that the 49ers held on to him that long where he really kind of started to advance and and be a better quarterback and now with Kansas City a a quarterback leading them to the playoffs with with an offense that fueled by the running game but when you're the number one overall pick uh, there's a lot to that. Again, thanks to Paul Tagli of you. We're, we got a bunch of commissioners chiming in. That's how big this Fox Sports Sunday draft is. Quickly, uh, the Cleveland Browns are on the clock, and they have got the pick is in. Oh. Number eight overall, the Browns apparently have not had to trade number eight as they moved up earlier with the Eagles and with the Ravens. They still kept their first-round pick. Browns are on the clock. The Cleveland Browns select Trent Richardson. There it is. Running back, Alabama. There is your top ten hat trick. How many times times will he show up in the countdown today, Dan, as besetting the efforts of franchises? Here's here's the thing about it is they did get that first-round pick from the Colts when they dealt him after his one-plus seasons with the team. His rookie year wasn't that bad, but when you're third overall like he was in the 2012 draft, you expected a lot more. You expected a workhorse back, and the Browns ditched him after 18 games with the franchise. Well, let's call it what it is. On a yard per carry basis, he fell forward. So yes. the, even though the numbers may have aggregated into something that looked passable, he was never a dominant back. I think he had one or two games where you turned turned eyes and you said, wow, that that could be something. Otherwise, it was a, it was a lackluster effort, and they, they got the deal. And, and granted, they, they were able to fleece the Colts and beset the issues and the expectations of a lot of fantasy owners who were wishing, wanting, hoping that arriving with Andrew Luck would help things. But it was not to be, and now he looks to restart his career in Baltimore. We are eight picks into the Fox Sports Sunday mock draft. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the clock. 